What if I told you that, right beside you on the tree of life, there existed another humanity, an anabolic version? A species of human so strong, so tough, and so adapted to danger that they would make a modern Olympic athlete look fragile. Forget the image of the stooped, stupid caveman. That's a myth. Modern science has unearthed the truth about Neanderthals, and what we've found is a true freep of nature in the most powerful sense of the word. Today we're going to dissect the biology, the strength, and the superhuman resilience of our sister species. If you're ready to see prehistory in a way you never imagined, then power up our expedition, leave a like to help us unearth more secrets, and subscribe to Extinct Doc, because the facts we're about to reveal are simply insane. To understand the machine, we need to look at the blueprint. Homo neanderthalensis was not a primitive version of us, it was a different model designed for a different world. And what a design it was. Let's start with height and weight. They were shorter than us, with males averaging around 5 foot 5 and females 5 foot 1. But make no mistake, they were incredibly wider and heavier. Analysis of their skeletons indicates a much higher body mass index, BMI. While a healthy modern human has a BMI between 18 and 25, a Neanderthal would be in the 28 to 30 range, what we would consider overweight today. But it wasn't fat. It was 175 to 200 pounds of pure muscle and dense bone. A body mass designed to maximize heat production and minimize its loss, following Allen's rule, which dictates that limbs are shorter in cold climates. They were built like an elite power lifter or MMA fighter. And their skeletons? They were literal human tanks. A Neabitol's bones were much thicker and denser than those of Homo sapiens. Their cortical bone walls were thicker, an adaptation that, according to research by paleoanthropologist Eric Trinkhaus, made them far more resistant to impact fractures. Their rib cages were enormous and bell-shaped, wider at the base, and their pelvis was also wider. Everything in their design screamed one thing, strength and resilience. They were the heavy infantry of evolution, designed for close quarters combat in a brutal world. A body like that needs a powerful engine and a lot of fuel, and the Neanderthal's engine operated at a speed we can barely imagine. First, let's talk about air. That bell-shaped ribcage wasn't just for robustness. Studies on the morphology of their ribs, like those conducted at the Kebara site in Israel, suggest that a Neanderthal's lung capacity was significantly larger than ours, perhaps 20% larger. They literally gobbled air. This was essential not only for high-intensity activities, but also for regulating body temperature in a frigid climate. They had absurd stamina. And to fuel this machine, the caloric mead was insane. Research, including stable isotope studies on their bones that reveal their diet, and metabolic models based on their muscle mass, estimate that a male Neanderthal needed to consume between 4,000 and 5,000 calories a day just to survive. On days of intense hunting or extreme cold, that number could be even higher. To put that in perspective, that's double what an average adult male needs today. It's the equivalent of eating 10 Big Macs every single day. This metabolic demand was a double-edged sword. It gave them incredible strength, but made them extremely vulnerable to food scarcity. And where did they get all this fuel? They were hyper-carnivores, the top predators of their time. Their diet was focused on the largest and fattiest animals of the Ice Age. Mammoths, woolly rhinos, bison, wild horses, and reindeer. They didn't just eat the lean meat. They smashed open every bone to extract the fat-rich marrow, and even ate the brain and internal organs to get essential nutrients. They were the most efficient megafauna processing machine that has ever existed. Imagine having to consume 5,000 calories every single day just to survive. 
Which of these features of the Neanderthal engine impresses you more? The superhuman lung capacity or the insane caloric need? Leave your opinion in the comments. With a design like that and such a powerful engine, what was the result? Strength that bordered on the superhuman. The muscle attachment sites on their bones were much larger and rugged than ours. Biomechanical analyses, like those conducted by Professor Stephen E. Churchill of Duke University, suggest that a Neanderthal's grip and pulling strength were phenomenal. Picture a confrontation. A Neanderthal could likely overpower a modern human in a contest of brute strength with ease. And their speed? Despite their heavy bodies, they weren't slow. Their shorter, more robust leg bones were not ideal for long-distance running, like ours. But their muscle fiber composition, inferred from their genetics and anatomy, was likely dominated by fast-twitch fibers. This made them explosive. They were sprinters, not marathon runners. Perfect for ambushes and short bursts of power to take down a giant prey animal at close range. But the most freakish, the most unbelievable trait of all, was their durability. Neanderthal skeletons tell a story of a life of violence and pain, but also of an almost unbelievable resilience. The aforementioned paleoanthropologist Eric Trinkhaus, after analyzing dozens of fossils, discovered a shocking pattern. Neanderthal suffered an extremely high number of traumatic injuries, fractures to the skull, neck, shoulders, arms, legs. The pattern of injuries, as he famously described, was identical to that of professional rodeo riders today, who deal with large, dangerous animals. They were constantly being trampled, gored, and thrown by and their... The pro most incredible thing is that they survived. One statistical analysis revealed that about 74% of the Neanderthals from Shanidar showed signs of serious head or neck injuries that had healed. They survived wounds that would kill us today, even with hospitals. The famous old man of La Chapelle aux Saint in France survived for years with a broken rib, severe arthritis in his spine, and without most of his teeth. And the most extreme case, that of Shanidar I, a Neanderthal who survived for decades after a blow crushed the side of his face, blinded him in one eye, paralyzed his right arm, and left him with a limp. Their ability to endure and recover from trauma was simply otherworldly. But what about the brain? As we've said, the Neanderthal brain was, on average, larger than ours. So why didn't they inherit the Earth? The answer may lie not in size, but in its internal architecture. Using digital endocasts of the interior of fossil skulls, a team led by Dr. Aylaned Pierce of Oxford University made a fascinating discovery. Proportionally, a much larger part of the Neanderthal brain was devoted to visual processing and motor control. Their occipital lobes, responsible for vision, were visibly larger. This makes perfect sense. Hunting giant prey by ambush, often in the dim light of dawn or dusk during the long nights of the Ice Age, required exceptional vision and perfect hand-eye coordination. Their brain was a finely tuned hunting machine. But this specialization came at a cost. The areas of the brain associated with social processing and complex language, like the frontal and parietal lobes, were proportionally smaller compared to ours. This doesn't mean they lacked language or society, but it suggests that our great advantage was a brain wired to manage larger and more complex social networks. And their intelligence manifested in unique ways. Look at their jaws and teeth. Their front teeth were large and show extreme wear patterns with scratches and microchips that aren't caused by food. Forensic analysis of these teeth, led by researchers like Dr. Ivana Fiore, reveals the truth. They used their mouths as a third hand. They would grip animal hides with their teeth while scraping them with a stone tool or hold a piece of wood while carving it. 
it was an ingenious behavioral adaptation that freed up their hands for complex tasks. The Neanderthal brain was a visual hunting supercomputer, while ours was a social supercomputer. What do you think was more crucial for long-term survival in prehistory? Having better eyesight or having more friends? Leave your opinion. Neanderthals disappeared 40,000 years ago, but they didn't vanish completely. The monumental work of geneticists like Swante Peebo, who won the Nobel Prize for sequencing the Neanderthal genome, revealed the final twist. We interbred. And most modern non-African humans carry between 1 and 3 percent Neanderthal DNA. And what does that DNA do in you? It's a legacy of a freak of nature. This DNA gave us crucial advantages. It supercharged our immune system. Neanderthal genes, like those that regulate toll-like receptors, gave us a ready-made defense against the viruses and bacteria of Eurasia, to which our African ancestors had no immunity. Some genes helped us adapt to colder climates and different levels of sunlight. But this legacy is a double-edged sword. The same genes that protected us in the past can cause problems today. Genetic variations inherited from Neanderthals are associated with a higher risk for allergies, depression, addiction, and even faster blood clotting, which was great for healing hunting wounds, but today increases the risk of strokes and embolisms. And in a shocking recent discovery, researchers at the Max Planck Institute showed that a segment of Neanderthal DNA is the main genetic risk factor for severe cases of COVID-19. The ghost of our cousins still shapes our health and our biology today. Strong, fast, tough, and with a mind laser-focused on the hunt, Neanderthals were not an evolutionary failure. They were a masterpiece of adaptation, a parallel humanity that thrived for hundreds of thousands of years. They were indeed freaks of nature, and we should say that with the utmost respect and admiration. And if you want to gain more knowledge about the incredible and bizarre forms that life has taken on this planet, your journey is just beginning. Continue this exploration with us. Subscribe to Extinct Doc and hit the bell so you don't miss a single chapter of our past. Leave a like if this story changed your view of Neanderthals and share this video with everyone who loves the real superhumans of prehistory. Your interaction is vital for us to continue unearthing the secrets of life. Thank you for watching and see you next time.